An angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet, Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife, but had no marital relations with her until she had borne a son, and he named him Jesus. The Gospel of the Lord. Sleepers, wake. A voice astounds us. I speak to you in the name of Jesus Christ, the coming one. Amen. We've heard this story so many times, and so we nod and say unthinkingly, well, of course. But think with me about it for just a moment, this story you've just heard. The sheer unlikelihood of it all. This is a story about life's surprises. Carl Jung used to say when he was asked, how do you define God? He would say something like this, God is that which cuts across our path and upsets all our subjective plans and changes the course of our life. God is a God of surprises. I don't imagine that this story is what Joseph had in mind when he fell in love with Mary. What do you think? Can you imagine what it must have been like for him? Someone who helps us to imagine it is the great Anglo-American poet W. H. Auden. In his wonderful poem, For the Time Being, a Christmas Oratorio, written during the early wars of years of World War II, a section of that poem is called The Temptation of St. Joseph. Joseph a good, upright, carpenter engineer. By the way, the word we translate as carpenter really means a building contractor, not just a carpenter. And you know what engineers and building contractors are like, don't you? (laughs) Especially if you live with one. He's deeply in love, this building contractor is and his suit is well-pressed, his hair is nicely combed, and he heads off to Mary's house. But there is such a crowd gathered outside her door that he can't get in, and what he hears is what has happened. She's pregnant. Not what this buttoned-down man had in mind. So he decides to go to a neighborhood bar wouldn't you? (laughs) And while he's at the bar, there is a chorus, like a Greek chorus, that tells us some of his thoughts. The chorus goes like this, Joseph, you've heard what Mary says occurred. Yes, it may be so. Is it likely? No. Mary may be pure, the chorus goes on, but Joseph, are you sure? How is one to tell? Suppose, for instance, well, maybe, maybe not, but Joseph, you know what? Your world, of course, will say about you anyway. Joseph's world has been turned upside down. 
God doesn't always act that way, but if you've been paying attention, you'll notice God often acts that way, not just in Joseph's life or Mary's, but in ours. Our world turned upside down. So what are we to do when our world is turned upside down? Well, here we might want to pay attention to the story about Samuel. Samuel, in the middle of being a mere child, a kind of doorkeeper in the temple of God at Shiloh, this is before ever a temple was built in Jerusalem, doesn't even know who God is yet according to the story. He's just a servant in the temple. But God has a dream for Samuel. It's probably not what Samuel had in mind for his life, but it's what God has in mind. And so God comes and speaks and speaks and speaks and speaks And notice that Samuel, who will turn out to be a great prophet, doesn't know who it is that's speaking for the first three times. It's hard to hear God when God is cutting across your plans for your life, when your well-organized, well-engineered life is being turned upside down. It's hard to hear what God has to say. My bet is it won't take just four times for God to speak and you and I to hear what God is saying, but more like 40 or 400 times. But God keeps speaking. God doesn't give up on a Joseph or a Samuel or a you or a me. Because God's dream is so much larger for us. It's so much fuller, has more life to it than that nicely engineered thing that we've designed. Oh sure, if the drawers go in and out of the desk, it's satisfying to a certain extent. And of course it's a good thing if the building stands up, or the two halves of the bridge meet in the middle. I don't want to poo-poo any of those things. But after the drawer is open and the tower's up and the bridge meets, what then? What do you do with the rest of your life? Build another bridge? Keep opening and closing the drawer? Climb the tower and, well, you get the picture. Or do you begin listening for something new, some surprise? God's idea for you is bigger than your own. God's dream, bigger than your own. Sleepers wake. A voice astounds us. What if God is saying, not just to a Joseph or to a Samuel, wake up, I have something new in mind for you, but to you and me? in our personal lives, in our families' lives, and in the life of this parish? What if God has something new and different in mind? It will take a widening of our imaginations to take it in. Have you planned a simple, nicely carpentered life What if God interrupts and say, to say, I'd like you to foster my son. He's coming, you know. Here, will you take him? And what if in your family's life you've had a series of boxes that you've checked off? Right school, right athletics, right college, right career, 
and God says, you know what? Those are all well and good. I'm not against any of those things, but I have something larger in mind for you. Remember, in just a few days after Christmas, God's going to ask Joseph and Mary and the young Jesus to flee into Egypt to become refugees to the life they had planned to try out something else. What if God's saying to you, you know what, I'm powerful mystery, I am. Will you let me take you to a new land, a new home? Let's see what life will be like there, shall we? Will you go with me? And what if God's dream for Trinity Church is larger than a balanced budget? and a growing endowment, wonderful as those are. What if God is saying, sleepers at Trinity, awake. I have a bigger dream for you. What if God's dream for us is that every single family here were paired with a family at the Dever McCormick School to see what life is like for them to learn how Jesus has come into the flesh there as much as here? Or what if God's dream is that our TEEP program and our youth ministries program really learn about each other? And where all of us know all of them by face and name. Sleepers wake. God is a powerful mystery. Not just 2,000 years ago when Joseph's life was turned upside down and he became the foster father of the Son of God. But in our lives, where God is saying, here, take him, foster him. In your personal life, in your family life, in your church's life. Let me turn your life upside down. And if you say, along with Joseph, I'd rather go to the bar, I understand. But God will not stop. God will come and speak to you there as well, answering the chorus inside you, with another chorus that says, with God, all things are possible. What if that's true? Sleepers wake.